this tutorial, I'm going to share with you how I make a scrap quilt as you go using the technique row by row in quilt as you go. This technique is so easy, it's so beautiful, it's simplistic, and it's very awesome. As I'm looking at this quilt here, I'm so encouraged by the joy that I had while I was making this. This was really sort of peaceful to make. And the reason why I say that is because, you know, sometimes when you make a quilt, you gotta do all the matching up of seams and you gotta make sure all the blocks are the same size. But I threw all of that out the door when I made this quilt as you go scrap quilt. So come with me and share with me the journey, how I actually made this and the awesomeness and the beauty of this particular scrap quilt. It's just, it was so peaceful to make this. Sometimes a scrap quilt can just give you that ease of mind whereby you don't feel that you have to have everything so perfect. But in its essence, it comes out perfect anyway. I mean, let's look at it again. I want to encourage you to show you how beautiful this is. Look at that. The colors just brings you in, doesn't it? It draws you in. There's so much for the eyes to see. There is so much for you to look at. There is so much for you to be like, oh my God, it looks pretty. And like, oh my God, wow. Scrap quilts. Somehow they kind of grab you, don't they? So come with me and share the awesomeness of this beautiful quilt that gave me some tranquility when I was making it. And I hope when you make your scrap quilt as you go, that you experience the same. So grab all your scraps and your ruler and whatever else you're going to use, bring a cup of coffee or a bottle of wine <laughs> and share in the joy of making this. So let's get started. <laughs> So today, guys, I am thinking of doing a scrap quilt. Now, for years, I have been making odd scrap blocks and just stacking it. Now, I've sort of emptied the box that I think I have enough of the already made blocks. I'll show a few of them to you. Now, normally, I don't usually make these kind of quilts. I haven't done one of these in a very long time. So I thought I'll make them into a quilt. It's about time that I bring them into quilt life rather than quilt block life sitting at the box or the bottom of the box I should say. So I have a few here I've already made and to be honest I am just going to do an improv. I'm not really concerned about if it's a Halloween print, if it's a Christmas print, I'm not concerned about that. I'm just going to use up as much as the fabric as I possibly can. I'm not concerned as to whether or not it's a piece like this, a rectangular piece. I'm not even bothered if it's cut. Um, let me see, I found a piece a moment ago. So even if it's cut as, a, as an odd triangle or even something like that, something small, you know, just or cut at an angle, like for example, this. I'm not too worried about it. I'm still going to use it. Um, I always say I keep them for a reason because I know I can make them into a quilt of some kind. So even if I have a sample block that I have made ages ago, I'm going to keep something like this. Again, I'm going to keep, so I'm just gonna give them a rough press, even something like this with a curve. This was um, from my Waves quilt which is already on YouTube. So if you want to have a look at it, you can. Um, again, this block here, a lot of them are very old. When I say very old, they're probably four years old. This is a four years old one. I know because when I look at it, I can see the fabrics I was using when I was still teaching in the UK. And um, these are some of the fabrics from school, for example, this one here, that one there, that one there. These are some of the fabrics from school. So if I had like a free period and um, wherever I'm supposed to be planning, so what I'll probably do if I've done all my lesson planning, I used to then um, just take spare odd fabrics and just make up a block or something if I wanted to try something out for the kids. So this was probably very likely an unfinished idea. 
and so I took it home and um, yeah, put it in my scrap box pile. Again, an odd block. I think I had five or six of these or even more and I use it in one of my quilts already. And um, so I have two, the last two remaining. I was working this pattern out and as you can see, it's supposed to be a star. Oh my God, I can never remember the name of this star, but I didn't go ahead and make it into a complete quilt because I felt the star points was not prominent enough. I actually should have used it the other way around. I should have used the darker blue as the star points and this one here as the, I'll bring it closer so you can see. Um, so yeah, the star legs are not. So the center blue should have really been the star legs. So I should have swapped them around and use another prominent color there to highlight the star legs. But yeah, you live and you learn, isn't it? So anyway, I kept it. So it, un I mean, face to face I can see, but on the camera I can't. Um, so again, yeah, another piece there. This one is a Christmas one. Never did cut, <laughs> it's already drawn out to cut into half square triangles. Never did, went ahead and did it. So I don't know. I think this was one probably I was using to demonstrate to the students because I see it has cut, cut there. So I wouldn't write that for myself. So I think I was, um, I think we were making a Christmas table runner for the students. And I think I um, was demonstrating what they needed to do. So that's why I think I've written cut, cut there. Hopefully you can see it if I bring it in the camera closely. Um, yeah, so that's that. So I will use that one up. But yeah, I do have quite a bit. It's the amazing thing about these scraps is that they bring back memories, don't they? So these are some five square ones. I'll use those. Um, this one is from my diamonds quilt, I think, very big. So, as I said, I'm not too concerned about the size. So I'm not sure if I'll cut this in half, which I probably will, or use it as is. I'm not too concerned about the size. So I'm gonna be, it's gonna be an improv. This one is quite odd, very strange colors, Karen. But yeah, so this one as well. This again was a quilt in idea, never did come to fruition. <laughs> Don't know why. I think I've got two of those. So I'll probably put together and make something out of it for a block. So that's my idea. This one is quite huge. No, it's not quite. Oh, this is a nice one. I like this one. Um, that one there again. So quite a lot. I do feel I have enough blocks to make a large quilt. It's going to be a quilt as you go. So it's a scrappy quilt as you go. I have never done one of those before. So this is my first time. It's my first time together with you. So if you've never done a scrappy quilt as you go, we are in this together. These ones are so old, oh my gosh. I love how I could remember them. This one is probably an, at least another four years old as well. It's, I think it's a group of four. Yeah, it's a group of four. I don't know what the other one is. Hopefully I find it. Uh, I'll put them aside because I want to be able to find it and then that way I have them together to make, it's going to be a big block, I know. Another one, as I said, a lot, a lot of already made blocks. And I had to dig deep down in the box to get it. This one again, probably another four or five years old because I remember trying out the pattern. And again, I didn't go ahead with it because I felt there was too much movement with the eyes. So I abandoned it. And then I thought, let me try this one instead. I thought this one is okay. Not sure if I went ahead with it. I don't have any memory of making that at all. So I may have to build this one up a little bit with some borders around it. And then another one again. And what I, I think what I love about these fabrics when I look at them that I've made into a block and I didn't go ahead, it did teach me a lot. It all, It taught me that if I look at the colors there, it's just, it doesn't help the block. It's too dark and, oh, I should say it's too strong. The color is too vibrant for the pattern that I wanted in the middle. And in the middle is, it really is a half, a half square triangle on the end and this for four patch in the middle. But again, I use the colors the inc incorrect way around. Really, this red hair should have been in the four patch so that it highlights it. But yeah, you live and you learn. So I love that I do that. It 
it allows me to look back and I can see where my mistakes were and how I have grown with my quilting. So that's why I think today is the day I need to make it into a quilt. Let's see any more. Yep, this one as well. It's a nice one, not too bad. Not too bad, I can clearly see the pattern. I don't know why I abandoned this one, but I did. Again, it was probably a trial block to get the measurements right for a, an actual quilt, which, which, which I think is my new beginnings quilt actually, yes. Because, you know, obviously when I'm writing the pattern, I'm, I will use scraps to write the pattern. That's the way I do it because I'm very visual. I'm a visual learner, so I have to see it in order to work out the, the measurement details. This is another old one from school. I, again, because I know, I remember, was it? Oh, yes. This is actual shirt. This is a shirt fabric here. And I think this is one from home from me. Black is from work. And this is from work as well. This one is linen, this one here. So I know definitely it's one from work. And sometimes I used to take fabrics from home. Again, when I know I had a free period and I will sit there and just sew something together. So you get the idea. So it's literally just old. So there's the other half of that one I initially showed you about with the four patch in the middle and the half square triangles. Just so wrong, isn't it? Looking at it now, because if I were to make this into a quilt, I would truly will not see this. In fact, what would happen if I were to make it into a quilt is that this will take over, but I will then see a visual pattern with these. I wouldn't see the individual pattern. I would see a line pattern joining, if that makes sense. Um, so if I were to see if I can pick it back up quickly. If I were to put them together, the pattern I would get is from the lighter fabric here. Hopefully you can see what I'm talking about. God, it needs ironing. They're so rough. <laughs> so let me see if I can get what I'm show you exactly what I'm talking about. But the iron's not on yet. So if I join them together, hopefully you're making it out. You know, I will get this pattern, which is good. But at the time, I did not see that visually. I really wanted these, the four patches to show up. But hey, you live and you learn. But that that will be nice. Probably I can still make it into something else using different fabrics. That's not a bad idea, Karen. So yeah, so I think I have quite a lot here and I still got more that I can make into fresh blocks. I got this Christmas one there. And this Christmas one, this is from my, I think I did a, a sort of a modern version version of a, oh my God, I forgot the name, what's wrong with my brains, of a log cabin. Another very large, oblong, funny shaped block. So that was, that was a technique I used to make a block. So I just literally used to just made odd ones. This one is from my butterfly bouquet quilt. St it still even have the pin on it. <laughs> Where I actually sewed the blocks together to sew, but I never did use it. And I even um, sewed on a square at the corner there so I can cut it off and flip it back. So I think I'll pin it back and make it into what it was supposed to be. Um, this one here is from um, another quilt. I can't remember the name, but I will surely tell you at the end. So guys, I think you've got my idea of what I intend to do. So with the rest of the fabric on the table, what I will do is either um, sew them around in any, in any color, any shape. I'm not concerned about the shape of the block. I really am not. So for like something like this, I will just sew it together. So even if I have a curve or an odd shape within the, the block, I'm not worried about it. I'm sure you're getting my point. So that's what I'm going to do. And then um, I'll press them all, make sure they're lovely and flat. And then we'll take it there. So we'll go straight into the layout. I'll make a few blocks with you and then you get an idea of what I'm doing. But it's going to be, I wouldn't say it's a traditional quilt, but it's definitely a scrap quilt in the sense that 
I am going to use my original blocks that I have made years ago and also what I am going to do as much as that is a scrap quilt remember I do like to keep my scrap quilt uniform so I'm hoping that I will be able to collect similar colors from each other I don't want it to be too strong or too to low contrast. I still want to keep it uniform. So I think the extra fabric that I'm going to use is going to represent the colors that's already in there so that it can coordinate somehow. All right. So let's get started and then we'll go from there. So it's a quote as you go, but I'm going to make it into rows first. And then from the rows, we're going to add them to the batting as I usually do. show you what I've done so far so I have made some rows I have made one two three four rows all together and what I did is the first row I made I made it as long as I possibly want the quilt row to be and then I sort of um, replicated that row with all of the others so ie I made the next three rows the same length however what I am doing differently is that I am not making all of the same blocks the same size because I've already made some of the blocks and yes, some of them are smaller and some of them are bigger. Remember, these blocks were made years ago. So what I have decided to do is to collect them or piece them in said groups. So i.e. if I've got really large blocks, I will put those large blocks together whatever medium or smaller blocks, I'll put those together in a row. So hence me not having to sort of destroy or cut up again that said block already, because at the end of the day, that was the idea I was going with all those years ago when I made these blocks, all right? So for example, things like this one here, I've just sewn it together. And this is a small block, so I am then fitting all the small blocks together with this one. So I'll put those in a row. So each row will have different sized blocks. I hope that makes sense. So one row would be a large row with blocks, large row with blocks, and the other two or three or four, whatever it is, if it's medium, small, they will be collectively together in one row. I think for me that makes it easier. Now, if you're going to do your quilt like this, you can. However, what I would say is that if you are going to be sort of, um, I don't know, because some people will not be able to work in that concept. They will have to, they will have to cut each block down to size. I am not going to do that. All right, because I want to finish this quickly. When I made the blocks years ago, the objective was to, obviously, when I finish a quilt, is what I used to do, 
I will take some scrap fabrics and I will sit there for like another 20 minutes or so and just sew together pieces of fabrics together to form a block. So I don't want to interfere with that concept. Whatever I did years ago, I'm going to remain with it. And whatever I did recently, I'm going to remain with it. So I'm not going to interfere with that. So I know some people will feel that they have to literally trim all the blocks to the same size. I'm not going to stress myself out to that. All right. So for example, this one here, remember these two were together. This was a very large block. So what I've done, I've unpicked that and I'm going to use it half and half separately as a block in a particular row. So that's where I am at the moment. I have done, as I said, one. This is one here. And this is another one. So this is like a medium sized one. This is a, a larger one. You can see that the blocks are larger there. And this one here as well, where the blocks are much larger. All right. But this particular one, I kept it with the diamond and point, And I think I have put it in the middle of the row. So that is what I'm doing with all that. But I'm really not cutting down the blocks. So whatever I made years ago, I'm sticking with. I think it's going to work. In fact, I know it's going to work. I can see the vision already. Now, what I was about to say is that if you want it, if you feel that you must cut it down into blocks, by all means, you go right ahead and measure your blocks out and you cut down to your size. What is 8 inches, 10 inches, 12 inches, and tally down to you. Or if you feel that it may not look visually appealing to you, what you can do is actually put some rows in between so i.e some inner borders you can do that to separate the rows but i'm not going to do that i i am going to sew all the rows together in my quilt of the go so i'm aiming to do five or six rows it should make a dent in my scrap i don't think it's going to make a huge dent but it will make a dent all right um so yeah so that's where we're at at the moment so but these ones here these are smaller rows that you can definitely see these are small ones here so i'm not sure if i will put these in a border or i'll just put them in a row not sure about it as yet but as as i am at the moment i am this is four rows here i'm doing row five that may just be enough um because i want to add borders as well but i'm not sure I'm not sure <laughs> I may just leave it as is all right so that is where I am at the moment this one here that I'm currently doing what I have done I'll just move the camera so these ones here so that one there so those were separate and I just sewed them together with a little piece at the bottom there this one here all right, so they're all the same size in this particular row. In this row, I'm going to add my star in. And but this one, I just made this one. However, I just think it's a little bit plain because it's just different fabric sewn together. So what I am going to do, just to make it a little bit more interesting, I am going to cut it in half. And it doesn't even have to be equal half because you know you can just cut it wherever and I'm just going to then swap it around and then give it a sort of a different visual appeal to it okay so what I'm going to do is just turn this upside down like so just to make it more visually appealing and then it looks like I have done really small pieces of fabric together to make this particular block so I'm going to sew these two together and then fit it right back in here if I want also I could separate it and add it in between the rows like so I could also do that I'm just bringing it closer So this is what I could possibly do, as I said, moving along and separate the two together that I just literally cut. I could do that. However, I'm going to leave it as is. So I'm going to simply um, 
sew it together like so because I do like that particular visual appeal there and I'm going to add that there the reason why I'm adding this one here because I recognize that I've got some pink there and I've got a brighter pink there so I'm liking that contrast right there this Halloween one I'm not sure if I'm going to leave it in the in there but I may may possibly which what my brain is telling me to do is to cut it in half and I'm going to cut it in half this way and I'm that and then I'm, I, and I didn't cut it in half equally to be honest and then I'm what I'm going to do is add possibly add another piece along there just to change it up a bit so that is I just think it was a little bit too dense for that sort of um for that block there it was just too much Halloween all right and the reason why I've used green is because there's little bits of green in there and I've stuck to that green one there just so that it sort of contrasts together nicely all right so that's my idea so what I'm going to do is just sew all of this together and as long as it comes up to the length of the others then I will stop and then I may possibly do one more row so I have six rows in total and then we will then go to the stage of actually basting the row onto the batting okay guys so the rows are completed now so the next thing to do is to start adding the batting so remember we're doing a quilt as you go in rows I have made six rows you can probably only see five here because I have one double up underneath they all are averaging the same length I am going to keep the layout as I have done here already because I made the rows obviously and this is the layout I want to keep so this is the way it's going to be set for the quilt now we're going to do it in rows as I said however what I am going to do is in my first initial um, quilt as you go for beginners video I did each row individually on the batting I'm not going to do that this time this is just another way to speed up the process all right these are the initial ideas i came up with as i said when we were traveling so the first one i did is as i demonstrated earlier in doing a or based in each row individually on the batting and then sewing those rows together to form the whole quilt in this one i'm going to separate the rows so i'm going to sew three rows together and then i'm going to sew the other three rows together and i'm going to baste them individually I'm also going to base them with the backing on so to complete the job in one go all right so I'm going to show you the second technique now as a very easy quilt as you go for sewing under your small throat space in essence what you really would be doing is sort of making a smaller quilt right in this method here and so quilting the three rows together on the batting you'll be you'll be doing it in a smaller section so I can sort of perceive it as a baby quilt or a very small table runner per se okay so that is the objective and then we will join them together so again it should complete a lot more quickly looking at it from the camera's view I must say it looks gorgeous I am loving it what I would also say is that this was very peaceful. It was very enjoyable actually making this quilt. Why? Because as I said, a lot of the blocks, majority of the blocks was already done. And so therefore the process was really just joining them, pressing, etc., and making up a, a few new ones. But I really, really thoroughly enjoyed this process of making a scrappy quilt of this nature. So I'm going to sew them together. This is my biggest or widest row, I reckon. So I'm gonna sew it together and I will do the first three rows together on camera and then I will do the other off camera, but I will show you the joining process so that you're aware of what I'm doing because whatever I do for this one is what I'm going to do with this one. I am not. Okay, so we're gonna add the batting now. So my quilt is in half here. So I have my three rows and I have folded it in half. And you can see my batting here, which is on the roll and the batting is folded. 
Okay, so if I spread it apart like that, you can see it, all right? And you can see the seam line here. So what I am going to do, and this is the easiest way I find to actually baste my quilts, irregardless of whatever quilt I am doing, whatever method I'm using, I always fold the quilt top and put the, both folds together, the fold of the quilt top and the fold of the batting, and then I will cut to whatever desired width, length, etc. that I need. Okay, so I'm going to cut it here now. And I'll do the same for the next side also, or the other one. I'm just going to cut it, not too wide, because I don't want to waste the batting. Alright, so I'm going to put that down. And all I am going to do now is to simply baste it, just as I would normally. So I'm going to open it up and open up the batting. And at present, it's on the, I like to call it the bumpy side or the smooth side. It's on the smooth side. So it doesn't really matter at this stage, to be honest, whatever side of the batting you choose to put the quilt top one is entirely down to you, but uh, uh, to be honest, most times I do start on the smooth side. So I'm just going to lay it out like so. And you can see I've given myself a little bit of space there. Now remember, we are going to join together, so don't waste your batting. So I'm just going to flop it all out, as I usually do. And usually it does, you know, it does fall on there quite easily. I don't usually have a problem with it. I think I am running very low at the moment. So, usually I would now trim off any excess batting. As you can see, I have lots there to get rid of. And I would use this piece for a baby quilt, a table runner, table topper, etc. To make bags, whatever. You know, so I use up. Or even, I also love making um, little, like, coffee cups, uh, mats. So I would use those up on that. All right, so that's it there. So I'm going to baste as I normally would. So I usually just look for half of the, and you can see, look, and this is why I love this batting so much. This batting is polyester. I think it's 60% polyester or 70% polyester. No, tell a lie. 70% cotton, 30% polyester. I love it because you do get that area whereby you can just put it on and it stays nicely. So I'm just going to flip it back to half of the quilt. I just find it, as I said, this is the most easiest technique. Now this is quite loud, which means it's almost empty. And I like to spray the batting. <laughs> just make sure your room is ventilated.
All right, so I have quilted both of the quilt tops onto the batting. All right, so what we're going to do now is to join them. So I have already trimmed back the first one here. So what I did is trim away the batting and the backing fabric, like you see on this one here, straight to the edge of the quilt top. All right, I hope that makes sense. So we're going to join them now. So the first stage in joining is to trim one side only and leave the other side untouched. Now to prepare the other side for joining onto this side, what we need to do is to trim away the excess batting here. So we're going to use a very long, sharp scissors or whatever you want to use that's easier for you to work with. I'm going to use my scissors here and I'm going to just trim away this as I said, okay? So the objective is to trim away the batting, I repeat, trim away the batting to the edge of the fabric of the quilt or the quilt top if that makes sense. And then you would have the excess batting left behind. So I'm going to get to that stage and I'll come back and show you the next step. Alright guys, so as you can see, I've trimmed away the batting from the edge of the block, just like this one. The only difference now is I've left the backing fabric on. Okay, so with the batting removed now, you can clearly see how much of this fabric here, the backing fabric you need in order to fold over to hide that raw edge. So I'm cutting away um, probably about half an inch probably slightly more. I will leave that decision up to you. However, why do you want that fold to hide the raw edge it's entirely down to you? Okay, I wouldn't go too big because you'll make it very noticeable. However, the amount you leave should be enough to cover both of the raw edges. So I'm just gonna continue trimming away as you can see the excess there, all the way down. And then the next step is to join it together. Try to remain consistent if you're going to do it freehand. If you are going to use a rotary cutter, and by all means put it on your cutting mat and cut away as normal. But just try to remain consistent if you're going to do it freehand. So you have the same width of the extra batting, trim away so that it's equal when you fold it over and, and no areas is fatter or smaller than one side. So just try to remain consistent when you do that. You just need a very sharp fabric shears to do this so that it moves a little bit more easier for you and by all means just take your time. Alright, so let's move on to the next stage now. Okay, so once it's all trimmed off, the next step now is to join it together, as I said. However, you need to flip it front sides together. What I want to point out here is that if we were using a pattern that was one pattern throughout, you would need to line up each of your points. So for example, if I had a separation of a row here with in, inner sashings and inner sashings on this side, I would need to line up those inner sashings together for example like so but because it's a scrap fabric I don't really have that particular issue however if you were making an ordinary quilt top and you have inner sashings or any other say a, a diamond on point for example you will need to line them up so that the whole pattern flows without seeing that particular join all right in this particular instance we don't have that issue what you do need to do though is flip it front sides together and you line up the fabric, sorry, line up the quilt top from point to point. I'm just gonna get it all the way to the top so that I have both lines here with me. So I'm just gonna sew them front sides together. Now ideally, if I'm going to sew it, I'm going to make sure that I turn it on the other side. So it's this side. So I'm just gonna flip that so that it's easier 
for you to comprehend what I am saying. So I am putting the quilt top with the excess. Let's make sure you're in the camera shot. So I'm putting the quilt top with the excess batting, sorry, backing fabric down on my counter, which is going to be down on my sewing machine. And I'm simply just going to line it up and just sew a stitch line all the way down here. Now I am going to sew an ordinary quarter inch. If you think that you're, you're going to be a little bit afraid of making sure you capture that quarter inch, then you can use a bigger size, all right? I'll leave that discretion up to you. However, for me, I like using a quarter inch because I know I have already trimmed away any extra batting so that I don't know that there's no issues. So we're going to do a straight stitch using a quarter inch all the way down just to ensure we join the two rows together now. Okay, now ideally your rows should line up. If it doesn't, by all means, you'll have to trim it up. And the reason why I say it should line up is because ideally when you made your rows, all of your rows should have been the same length. All right, so I'm going to do a stitch line. Once we've come back, I am going to press that stitch line open. So I want my seams to be lovely and flat. You don't have to do that but I think it helps. It just makes that bulk a little bit more easier to work with. All right, so let's get started on that. All right, so here we are at the sewing machine now. So I'm going to start to sew, but before I do that, just want to point out my quarter inch feet are still in and I'm going to adjust the stitch length. Now, if you're unsure, the stitch length is how long or short your stitches are. So mine is currently at 2.5, which is perfect for piecing, but we're not going to do that, are we? What we are going to do is just join these two quilt tops together. And so I'm going to lengthen mine to probably about 3.5 or four, whatever your fancy is. The reason I'm doing that is because I want my machine feet to glide on top of these layers quite easily. I don't want it to hesitate. I don't want it to struggle. If my stitch length is really short, it will allow it to struggle. However, if the length is a little bit more spaced out, okay, that means that the machine is not doing so much work. It's not overworking with all those layers. So that's what I'm going to do. So again, just make sure that the side where, or the quilt top where the extra backing fabric is, is that's laying on top of your machine because you want to be able to see that you've lined up both of the quilt tops evenly on your machine for the stitch line okay so that ensures it goes a lot more smoothly so just sew as normal and you can see the difference it does make a heavy sound it can tell you the machine is working a little bit harder however as long as you've given it that stitch length, it will allow it to glide through a lot more easily. And I don't have to feel like I am pulling it through, all right? So that's a little tip there. So ensure that you do that. So I'm going to finish this on this side, i.e. I'm going to stitch this and then I'm going to come back and show you how to literally use the extra backing fabric to cover the seam line. It's important to press the front and the back. I'm not looking for the seams to be open here. That's not what it's about. It's more mainly just to make that bulk really flat so that once you cover the raw edge, it's nice and flat and you can fold it over without any stress. So all I'm doing right now is just simply steaming down the front of the quilt top where that seam line is. That's all I am doing at the moment.
All right, so once that's done, Okay, so once that's done now, what we need to do is to fold it over so that it is lovely and neat and to hide the seam line. So remember that extra fabric we had, all I'm simply going to do is to fold once and fold twice and cover it. That is it sim simply there. Okay, once I have covered it, I'm going to pin or you can simply do this on the sewing machine. So I usually fold right to the edge where that raw edge is and the excess I fold over lovely and neat. You can choose to pin it or you can choose as I said to just simply do one job at the sewing machine which is entirely down to you. To be honest I usually sit there and fold it over and sew at the same time. That's what I do, but hopefully you get the idea. I'm just demonstrating here with the pins so that you see what it looks like. Once I have folded all over and I have stitched it down, so again, you can use a quarter inch seam. By this point, if you want to use your walking foot, you can, or your utility feet. The utility feet is the feet that comes on the sewing machine when you buy it. So that sort of stitch that you can use with any sort of stitch. So your zigzag stitch, exact, etc. Straight stitch. All right. So that's the feet I would use, or as I said, your walking foot. And you just continue to simply stitch along there. Okay. Now you don't have to use a quarter inch, as I said. You're just literally sewing it down. Okay. So that is what it's going to look like. All right, so if you want, you can do two stitch lines. You can do one stitch line at the end to hold it down flat and another one just on top, just to hold it down even flatter. It's entirely down to you. Once I've done the both stitches or one, I will then come back again and do a nice steam press just to ensure it lays, lays lovely and flat, okay? All right, let's move on to that. Once I've done that, I'll just do the binding and I'll come back and show you the entire quilt. I wanted to add something before I continued with this. What you need to ensure is once you have started to get to this stage, you need to, you will be having to sew this flat. So you'll need to open it flat on your sewing machine and do your stitch line, okay? You cannot fold it front sides together. That is not going to work. It must be flat, so i.e. your machine feet will be sitting on top there so you can do your straight line stitches. I hope that makes sense to you. Once you've done all of that, before you add your binding, you will then trim up your quilt top or your whole quilt in this case, as you would normally before you add your binding on and then your quilt is completed. All right, so this quilt measures 55 by 64. There is something beautiful that happens when you make a scrappy quilt. It just, it just works so beautifully especially when you use colors that reflect on each other, that really complements the whole tone of the quilt. The quilting alone on this is so much, it's a multitude of different quilting methods that I use to compile this whole quilt. It was an absolute joy to actually make this. I haven't made a quilt as you go, in a long time, nor have I ever made a quilt as you go with scraps. And this proves so much how much this technique is suitable for anyone who wants to learn quilting. It really does support you in having to use different learning quilting techniques on a quilt such as one like this. I use random blocks that I had ages ago, as you know, as I mentioned earlier, some of them I made up as I went along. So simple ones I would have made up as I went along would have been pieces like this, where I've added like three random sizes together. The quilting, again, as I said, I did different quilting methods on the blocks. It comes up really, really beautifully. One of the reasons why I did so many different quilting methods is because I wanted to emphasize the point that if you want to teach yourself to quilt, a scrappy quilt is perfect for that reason. 
Why I say that is because you have different sizes of blocks that you can use to practice. You will find yourself using very skinny um, strips. You would also, it will force you to remain in that area. It also forces you to create different wavy patterns. What I tend to do sometimes is use the same pattern on the print of the fabric to emphasize and to raise that profile. So here you can see, I just did up and down and across, up and down and across. Really, really lovely. It really forces you to teach yourself to do something else. And when it does that, it just means that you can then take the small little techniques that you've learned on your scrappy quilt onto a bigger quilt. And this one here, I just use zigzag lines, as you can see on this pink strip here. On this one, I did lots of circles. On this random block here, as you can see, I just more or less point to point there using that area in the corner as an object to just move forward to the center. And I did that motif there so that it looked really nicely. On some of the blocks, I just did meandering because it was just too dark. There's no point in doing something really lively. Like this one here, you can't see the impressions, but ideally it wasn't really worth doing anything. So meandering here again. This was really lovely guys to make. It was so peaceful. On this block here, a beautiful motif. Again, the, the yellow fabric really highlighted that. And I use a really sort of creamish, dark cream, goldish color for the quilting on top. One of my favorite blocks is this one here. The reason why I say that is because it's a simple, basic half square triangles. But if you have a quilt that is just that, half square triangles, and you can quilt it using these wavy lines, imagine the secondary pattern you will get from this pattern of quilting here just so simplistic and beautiful so i would really urge you to try this quilt as you go method and using the quilt as you go method method came about really really quickly it was really an easy process to complete it i could have gone bigger but i didn't really have the time to do so another favorite block is this one here again using those serpentine lines to really emphasize that and again, if you were to have a basic block such as this, but again, using your quilting will help show up your quilt so much more beautifully. Overall, an absolute pleasure. I did the word love here in this one. And there was one that my, my husband wanted to quilt and I did allow him to quilt on it. I'll find the block. I'll show you my one when I, when I demonstrated to him and what he had to do. I just love these blocks here, we're just using dot to dot. And it just looks so really lovely. So this is the one I demonstrated to him. And this is the one he did. Not too bad, he had a try. <laughs> Ideally, I probably wouldn't allow him to do that, but I thought, hey, he wants to have a go, let him play. You never know, <laughs> you just never know. <laughs> You might see him quilting. <laughs> but overall, guys, beautiful quilt. Absolutely gorgeous. It's a lovely size as well. Very, very pleased with the outcome. It, it was such a joy and so peaceful doing this. It was no stress at all. I'll show you the back. The, at the back is a sort of a, a piece backing. And this is the joining here. So really fine no problem with that at all let's try this side because the wind is blowing so that's what it looks like so guys i hope you enjoyed this tutorial don't forget to like and subscribe hit that notification bell give me a thumbs up for this one i think it's a beautiful quilt that inspires you to learn to quilt to teach yourself to quilt also you know you can practice your quilting use the shapes let it help you so like and subscribe let me know down below if there's something you can actually do 
and I look forward to hearing from you. I really, really do. I think I did do, show you that one. I think do another one somewhere as well, where I did writing on it. Yeah, and I put, I love you there. I mean, as I said, it's just an opportunity to really practice your quilting, build your confidence, use up all your scraps. You can also use the method of making extra blocks as you go when you finish a quilt. So when you do ready to make a scrap, scrap quilt, you don't have to make any blocks. This wasn't a, a fussful one at all. It was really easy to do. I thoroughly enjoyed making this. All right, guys, so I'm going to let you go now. Bye for now, and I'll see you in the next one. Happy quilting, guys.